Okay, we are on. Welcome. Thanks for dropping in and uh, lovely to see folks that are here and uh, to feel our hearts connecting with those of you who are practicing with us after the fact. Uh, yeah, so hmm, I'm going to be talking tonight about uh, a movie that I saw recently. And I'm, I was being very conscious as I was writing some notes to try very hard not to spoil it for you and try not to give too many spoilers you know if you haven't seen it yet we hope you do if you like going to movies it's it's great and so i'm i'm yeah mostly talking about the dharma that's in the movie and hopefully not uh not too many of the the good bits that make it worth going to see i would i would see it again um, so the movie is called Inside Out 2, Part 2. Has anybody here seen Inside Out, the first movie? This was a, a Pixar. <laughs> yes, a Pixar animated movie. And I had to Google it. The first one called Inside Out came out in 2015, uh, which is surprising. But all things related to time are surprising to me these days. <laughs> and um, so they finally come out with uh, Inside Out 2. And uh, they're just wonderful movies. I, I want to see the first one again as well. It had, had great, great uh, Dharma in it. When you're immersed in the Dharma, everything is, <laughs> everything's Dharma yeah I was I could do a whole series on movies but so how much to say without spoiling for you so he, here's just the basic outline is that it's about a, a girl named Riley and uh, and then they've animated these characters that are not just in her head they're in the whole body like they've that take turns at the control panel, take turns running the show kind of thing. Um, and they've, they've, each character is, you know, becomes this whole being. Uh, so in the, in the first, there's a huge storm. Whoa, that looks tornado-y. So if the power cuts off, um, blessings and well-being to you, because that might happen. That, that was big, what just rolled through there. Sorry. Uh, so not only do these characters they interplay with each other and they take turns, like kind of at the control panel of who is in charge in, at, at any given time, but they also come together to create the sense of self. And there's lots of dharma in there about how we create a sense of self um for someone that wants to read between the dharma lines so in in the first movie in 2015 um the main characters that they uh introduce are uh joy and sadness and then there is anger and disgust and fear I forget how old she is in the original movie. Um, yeah, I forget, so I won't try to guess. And in that one, joy and sadness are kind of in this uh, to see who's going to be in, in charge. And uh, joy is trying hard to keep sadness out of the picture. And of course, they learn that um, that they're both needed. And then in this second one, she's turning 13. You can already imagine. <laughs> if you recall, if you can still recall turning 13, that's a stretch for me, but uh, I could imagine. Um, so some 
four new emotion characters are introduced. And one is anxiety. The other is called ennui. And then embarrassment and envy. And yeah, it's really great what characters they choose that are really coming up as one is hitting puberty. And so ennui is, I hope I'm not butchering it because I'm not a francophone. It's E-N-N-U-I. It um, is a francophone word that means boredom or lethargy, um, apathy, um, kind of there's a, a quality of weariness and dissatisfaction, <laughs> 13. And so that's a great character. When I was curious, I was reflecting even, yeah, just after I'd watched the film, because fear was one of the original emotions. And then in this one, they bring in anxiety. And I was like, what's the difference between fear and anxiety that, you know, they're both there. And that's, interesting for us to look at what is the difference between fear and anxiety and fear is fear is good fear keeps us safe fear is a, a physiological and mental emotional response to immediate danger it's it's really um either to a perceived threat or to an immediate intense um, danger that's arising. Whereas anxiety is projected worry about something that may happen. And that includes may not happen. Uh, it's, so it's, um, it, of course, they are interrelated and interplay, but it's interesting to look at, you know, for ourselves, what is fear, which is wise to listen to and pay attention to and uh, respond to skillfully? And what is anxiety, worry, projection? Mm. And yeah, so there's something to reflect on there if that's something that's up for you. Um, what's, what's it really about and what's it telling us and is it necessary to be at the control panel right now. Um, as an aside, they also do a great job in these two films showing how core memories are stored and become beliefs. They become a whole belief system and the belief system becomes a sense of self, becomes a self. Of course, the Buddha taught <laughs> amazing insights into how a sense of self is created. And this is part of it, uh, memory and perceptions and identification and separation and how these create me and mine being separate from and um, a constant uh, sense of self. So let me just see if I can say this without, yes. So for a time in this second Inside Out Part 2, uh, the character, the emotion, the state of anxiety takes over for a while, takes control of the control board and um, exiles some of the others and uh, but it what it's so well done <laughs> because of the animation how how anxiety just gets so wound up and it has its own turmoil just like the little <laughs> wild winds that just passed through the window here um how it has its own momentum and just gets uh, whizzing around and and doing things so quickly and reactively and um, all the chaos that can happen from that anxiety. That's one way it can go. It can also just be uh, 
debilitating and where the ennui comes in with it. So, but it becomes clear, and I thought it was so well done, how anxiety's main storyline or main mm, thought bubble is I'm not good enough. That's so wise. I'm not good enough. And how much of that underlying core thought is propelling us into anxiety to try and control possible and future outcomes because there's a sense of not being needing to try and control things um, from that deep-rooted fear or mm, internalized idea of not being good enough. Mm. There's some beautiful insights about how she can, how we can all grow into coexisting with all these parts, not exiling anything, but Joy's primary thought of "I'm a good person." <laughs> can coexist with at times I'm not good enough and not to not um, add shame to these mm, shadowy parts even calling it shadow is not what I want to say hmm but we can have that idea like these are these are things that are not okay for me to be feeling. And rather, it is uh, can lead to insight and liberation and freedom to actually name who's at the control panel, to actually just get into the practice of naming, hmm, fear is here, anger is here. Which is different than saying, I am angry. Again, that's taking this on as a sense of self, as an identity and solidifying around it and creating self separate from all the boundless variables that are co-creating and conditioning that arising. And it can be a very liberating practice to just watch the language and try on for a little while. Watch how many times you say I. And to see if, to just say, yeah, fear is here, or hmm, joy is here. And this is, this is part of a Dharma practice is some people use it exclusively as the main part of their practice is noting. And um, it's a particular lineage of Dharma practice, but um, even if you just use it occasionally, it can be really freeing to just name, huh, what's up? Who's, what's asking for attention right now? And that way, awareness is at the control panel. (laughs) As soon as it's named, if it's not, then it's not being seen not being recognized by awake awareness. Uh, So naming or noting or however you want to call it is uh, labeling is a, can be important and liberating part of practice. And it also aligns with the Dharma Um, ooh, can you hear that? Big thunder, big thunder. Um, it also aligns with the Dharma to cultivate joy being at the helm. That this, 
Joy is something that's mentioned often in many of the, the lists and the practices of the Dharma. Um, and it, it, it's a particular kind of joy. Well, there's a few of them. One of them is, is called Piti, P-I-T-I. And this is joy is subtle and sweet and uh, pleasant. And mm, uh, another translation of this word is rapture, where the attention is wrapped with the object with you know if you're in nature if you're attending to the breath as an object if you're uh with another being whatever the conditions that the attention is comfortable to just be wrapped with it r-a-p-t like rapture another aspect of joy is uh, called mudita and this is one of the brahma vihara practices the divine abodes of the heart mm, the awake heart the heart mind and mm, it's a it's something that we cultivate in a meditation practice it's called mudita bhavana bhavana meaning cultivation we want to grow this seed, this quality, this way of relating to ourselves and each other and the world. And both of these are quite different than what uh, the culture, I'm annoyed when I say that phrase, the culture, because there's so many cultures and what does that actually mean? But mm, the this predominant social media teaching uh, culture about what joy is, you know, joy is winning the lottery or uh, I don't know what, like exuberance is what we think of and often with the word joy. But these two qualities that I was mentioning just before are much more subtle and, um, and peaceful inner inner cultivations yeah <clears throat> and so tonight uh, for the meditation practice we're going to practice metta bhavana the cultivation of uh, this quality of mudita and it's also related to this, some of the themes in this movie, in that this practice is um, one of the reasons why it's done. And it's very helpful for countering, for counterbalancing envy and, joy and um, jealousy, you know, where we feel a sense of lack or comparison you know, why did they get that? They already have blah, blah, blah. Why, you know, that that kind of comparison and envy, a sense of not enough, a sense of scarcity, um, where the heart contracts and, and separates. And so this practice mm, touches into, as much as we're able, It begins with uh, reflecting on someone that we know who things are going well for. <laughs> and we wish for it to get even better. <laughs> or may that stabilize for you. May, may your good fortune grow. Um, and that's, that's not our usual way we may be like wait a minute i want some of that and and it's this sense that there's not enough to go around which can be really deep rooted um ancestrally and familially and um culturally and everything 
It literally looks like a tornado. I'm not sure if I should be sitting at this window, but I'm here. It's just so distracting. Um, okay, so, so it begins um, in relationship to someone else. And, and we, even though we may feel, even though thoughts might arise like, nah, <laughs> yeah, but we don't really, you know, part of us is still feeling envious. It's that's okay. That's included. We want to not exile any of these parts. It's like, oh yeah, envy's here too. Envy's here too. And I have the intention to grow and to cultivate um, this generous heart, this interconnected heart, this um, heart that doesn't cut itself off from others and and our wishes for for their well-being and joy and happiness and good fortune. Um, let me just see if there's any other threads I want to pull out here. <clears throat> yeah, for some reason I pulled out the precepts and, and was mm, wanting to begin with uh, chanting these precepts and and uh, mm, as part of <clears throat> setting the tone and cultivating our connection with our values And I'm I'm debating that right now. Because it's kind of like a whole thing to te to teach about it, which I've already I've already done enough talking. So what I'm gonna do is just let you know in general what these mean. And then I'm going to chant it in Pali as we start the meditation. And you could just let the sound, the vibration, the intention of this very thousands of year old practice that's practiced all around the world, kind of a roll in, roll through and touch into your values, your intentions. Uh, whatever it means for you in your own words of what you want to cultivate, what you want to be at the helm of your being in the world. Let's see how that goes. And then we're going to do a little guided uh, mudita bhavana practice. Okay, I think that's all. wild out there okay so um adjust your posture for your meditation practice in a way that feels supportive and upright for you mm. some folks like to dim their lights or have a cushion or um, turn away from the computer, whatever helps you to be in a wakeful and peaceful posture. <clears throat> so the first part of this chant is um, reflecting on what you take refuge in. Where is the, the safe harbor for your heart-mind? 
uh, I'll be offering these refuge, taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. This means in our ability to awaken and the role model we have in the teachings, uh, the nature of all things, the Dharma, and in community, Sangha. And then there's these five precepts of undertaking the trainings to refrain from causing harm through my actions, through my speech, uh, through not taking what isn't freely given, causing harm with sensuality or sexuality, causing harm through intoxicants, um, yeah, and false speech. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Yeah, I think I did. So that's what the, the chant is. You could reflect on your own values or just let these sounds mm, create a container for your awareness. <clears throat> Namo tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranangga Chami, Dhammang Saranangga Chami, Sangang Saranangga Chami, Duryampi Buddhang Saranangga Chami, Duryampi Dhammang Saranangga Chami, Duryampi Sangang Saranangga Chami. Satyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatyampi Sangang Saranang Gachami Anati Pata Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Adina Dana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Kamaisu Michacharya Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Musawada Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Surya Mirya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Sadhu 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 Feel these intentions and vibrations that are being offered by other practitioners all around the world in this moment and over thousands of years. And feel them holding you, infusing, touching awake awareness with these deep intentions. Feel yourself lightened and brightened and buoyed by these skillful intentions. And as much as possible, let your whole being, body, awareness, Rest into that support, take refuge in, so that any unnecessary tension that's here in this moment, 
could soften Letting ourselves be held and grounded and supported. Feel yourself and awake awareness expand, widen, soften into this experience of being held. Let awareness suffuse the whole body and into the space around the body. So there's just a felt experience, the knowing of being here now. Right now, we're just keeping the field of awareness open. There's awareness of sounds coming and going, sensations arising and passing, thoughts arising, passing, just resting into a sphere of awareness that's just embodied here now. And gently let awareness gather in the area what's called chitta, the heart-mind, in the area of the center of the chest. Just feel whatever sensations are felt here. And as awareness abides in this area of heart-mind, we gently bring in the thought, for some people an image is helpful, or just the name of someone you know. Things are going relatively well for at this time. 
something something good has happened or there's some ease or some good fortune or some well-being something happy has happened for them recently it might be someone you know well or just someone you know of Sometimes the mind can mm, get active thinking, well, not everything is great for them. And so just let those thoughts pass through. And we just want to focus on any, any aspect that is good or joyful or well, or uh, perhaps there's just been an easing of some suffering or dukkha that's been present. Let's take a moment to see who comes into awareness. Even though everything might not be perfect for them, just trust what has arisen for you now. And then reflecting on what has gone well, what is good or happy for them. Still staying embodied in your own body, not projecting into uh, visualization, but still feeling awareness here now in your own body, particularly in the area of the heart, center of the chest. And in relationship with this one that we've called into awareness, you can silently repeat these phrases, particularly touching into the feeling of letting this grow. So we internally say, may your happiness continue to grow. May your well-being grow. May your joy expand. This, this subtle kind of joy. May your good fortune continue. I am happy for you. May your happiness continue. May your well being grow. May your joy expand. May your good fortune continue. I'm happy for you. So we can continue together for a few more moments with phrases like this or using your own words, but mostly touching into the feeling in your own awake awareness of these aspirations to let this good intention grow in relation to this being.
And if the attention has drifted away, gently reconnect with the felt experience in your own body, heart, mind, here and now. And now we gently bring into attention, into awareness, uh, a being that's traditionally called a benefactor. This is uh, perhaps a teacher in your life, a mentor. Um, it could be an animal companion that, that you learn a lot from. Uh, it could be some, someone in your family or friends that has supported you. And uh, so just bring in the awareness of one of these beings. It kind of stands in for all of them. And then continue. May your happiness continue. May whatever well-being is present, may that grow. May your joy expand. May your good fortune flourish. May your peace deepen. I am happy for you. Continue for a few more mo moments together with this benefactor. Using your own words or words like these that have been offered, but mostly feeling the sensation in the aware heart. Feeling embodied here and now. Now we gently open to all the beings, which is most of the people that we encounter in this life and in this world that are kind of neutral to us. There isn't a strong like or dislike. We often don't notice. Many people don't really notice. And so you could choose one person to kind of stand in for all of these neutral beings. Maybe someone you see, you know, at a shop that you frequent or someone in your neighborhood that you pass by that you maybe don't know very well. And then continuing the practice with this person, 
May your happiness continue. May your well-being grow. May your joy expand. May your good fortune flourish. May your peace deepen. I am happy for you. And releasing that connection of awareness, feel the body here and now, heart, mind, and now we gently bring in someone where there may be some discomfort, some disconnect, some confusion. Um, some unresolved, try hard not to choose the most difficult person in your life. But, uh, you know, somebody that there's some difficulty with. And even though there's uh, maybe difficulty at this time, uh, we can see that they may not be experiencing much joy. And we cultivate this practice for whatever is there for it to expand, to stabilize, to grow. We're not trying to fix someone else. It's our own hearts in relationship with those that are difficult. Being embodied in relationship. May whatever amount of happiness is present for you continue. May your well-being grow. May whatever amount of joy is present for you expand or stabilize. May your good fortune flourish. May your peace deepen. I am growing in my capacity to be happy for you. I'm happy for you.
And then perhaps a deeper breath or two, releasing that awareness, reconnecting if there's been any disconnect with the body, ground of awareness here and now. And touching into your own life experience. And growing the wish, the skillful wish for these qualities of, of piti joy or mudita joy to stabilize and expand and continue for ourselves, for yourself. Feel this like a light radiating, a wish, an intention, aspiration, expanding and filling every cell of your awareness. May my happiness continue. May my well-being grow. May my joy expand. May my good fortune flourish. May my peace deepen. I am happy. As much as possible for me in this moment, may I know happiness. Like the sun that shines and radiates on all beings without discriminating and choosing who receives and who doesn't. We let awareness shine, expand, radiate. May all beings everywhere Know the flourishing, deepening, expanding well being, peace, happiness. And joy. May all beings be safe. May all beings everywhere be free from dukkha.
So I'm just past here and now the sun is shining again. It was very intense for a bit. <laughs> so I hope you're all safe and well and protected. And may that be so for all beings. Thank you for joining us in this practice. And uh, I don't receive any royalties from Pixar, but do check out the movie <laughs> if you're so inclined. <laughs> I think it's got lots of good, good wisdom and, and joy in it. It's a good one to take young people to, but um, all ages, yeah. Thanks for practicing with us. <laughs>